Welcome back to The Mindful Hunter. I'm your host as always, Jay Nickel. And today, we're gonna take a look at my brand new rifle. Full disclaimer, I have not shot this rifle yet. This is the first in a series of videos I wanna start doing when I first get products, just called first impressions. What are my immediate thoughts after I get it home, take it out of the box, and actually have it in my hands before I get a chance to go use it? Sometimes I think it's really interesting what our first impressions are compared to how we feel about a product after we've been able to test it extensively. Sometimes things you didn't like at first grow on you and other times, you know, you fell in love the moment you open the box and the more you start to use it, the more you realize it's not the product for you. So this is a fierce CT rival in 300 PRC scoped with a Leupold VX5 HD shooting 212 grain ELDX uh, Hornady Precision Hunters and I have the attachment for a Spartan Precision removable bipod to go on it. In total, this rifle with scope and rings weighs 7.9 pounds. Now it has a titanium Remington 700 clone action with a 70 degree bolt throw. It has a trigger tech, special trigger, adjustable from one to three pounds. And one thing to note, they've gone through several different iterations of triggers on this particular model. So earlier models, I can't remember, wasn't even a trigger tech at first. It starts with a D. Either way, if you were to buy one of these used, you might wanna look into it because you're not guaranteed to get the trigger tech trigger. It could have one of the earlier versions. But I think they had some issues, they worked out some kinks, and they've decided to go for the rest of the production models with the Trigger Tech Specials. Now obviously, this comes with a fierce carbon stock and a fierce C3 carbon barrel, complete with muzzle brake factory installed. Now the scope, as I mentioned, is a Leupold VX5 HD 3 to 15 by 44 CDS ZL2 Fire Dot Duplex. The scope in total weighs 19 ounces. We're really doing a first impressions on the rifle, but in some ways I'm, I'm more excited about getting this scope than the rifle. There's really very few options in this particular weight class that offer the functionality and the feature set of the Leupold. One other nice addition is that Precision Optics up in Quinnell, who mounted the scope and set this rifle up for me, also shot a couple different loads through it, decided the 212 ELDX were the best load. I'm getting a 0.381 MOA at 100 yard groupings. And they also shot it through a chronograph, sent the data over to Korth in Alberta, and they shipped me custom turrets set at 4,000 feet above sea level for the scope. So I don't need to worry about dialing MOA or MIL, I can just dial right to the distance that I'm shooting at. As long as I don't change loads and I stay approximately between 2,000 and 6,000 feet above sea level, I should be great. And if you're curious, this is firing the 212 grain ELDX at 2,872 feet per second. All right, we got all the details out of the way. Now, what are my actual first impressions of, of the rifle? Um, First and foremost, as soon as I picked it up, I was blown away at how light it was. My other rifle is a Tika T3X 300 Wind Mag, which is not a heavy rifle by any standard, but it is a steel barrel, stainless steel barrel. It also has a muzzle brake that I had aftermarket installed. It has the same limb saver recoil pad, 
but it also has a Vortex PS2 Gen 2 scope on it that weighs 28 ounces. So I think in total, that other gun is probably running about a pound and a half heavier than this. So maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of, um, you know, nine, and maybe nine and a little bit pounds on that other gun. But when I first took it out of the box, I definitely noticed how light and well balanced it felt. Um, the very next thing I noticed was the pistol grip. So for those of you who are not aware, this does not have a traditional stock. It has more of a pistol grip style stock. This is the first rifle I've had with one of these. And so at first I wasn't quite sure where to put my hand because I was trying to grab it like a traditional stock. And then my buddy was like, yeah, you gotta, if, if you don't try and put your thumb over, keep your thumb on the same side as your hand and then kind of cup the pistol grip. And you'll notice that you can pull it into your shoulder much better. And immediately after that, I was kind of I was kind of shocked how readily the gun just sunk into my shoulder. Like it just it felt good. Um, the next thing I noticed, so it has a slightly raised cheek weld here on the stock, and immediately, like it just it it it, it felt it snugged into place for me. Now that's going to be a very personal preference for everybody. So I don't. I can't say that you're gonna fit this gun like I fit this gun. I'm a bigger guy, you know, six foot one, 260. Not even sure really how much that matters, but um, it felt good. Everything seemed solid, well constructed. I liked the Pic Picatinny rail attachment up front. That to me, and especially how it's recessed, was a bit of an added bonus that I really enjoyed. Now, the one thing I will note is that the action, I don't want to say it's sloppy. Now remember, this is modeled after a 700 clone, so it's a two lug action, not a three lug action. My Tika is a three lug action, which I think is modeled after the Seiko 85. Um, and I will say the Tika feels a bit more solid coming in and out. Here's the other thing, this is the first titanium action I've had, and I'm thinking the weight of the steel bolt might be what gives it that more solid feel. I've also heard some people say you kind of need to work this system in and once the action's been cycled a number of times, it kind of finds its groove. And again, I haven't run into, you know, see there, see how it, that's kind of what happened. So there's a, a little bit of play right here. And when you grab it, if you kind of give it a little too much, like I could see, like, okay, under normal circumstances, you're calm, you're at the range, everything's fine. There's no reason why you're gonna have any issue with this action whatsoever. But I could see under adrenaline pumping situations, if you were trying to smash through this cycle, you, you could definitely get you know hung up here for a quarter of a second or a half a second. Not a big deal, but definitely I think something that is that is noteworthy, and it does have this shorter throw, so it's only a 70 degree throw. Some people like that, some people don't. I think it's important to mention that. Um, now beside that, the other thing I wanna mention that right away I really enjoyed, because with my Vortex, it has somewhat of a narrow eye box, and for the, you know, the non-gun nerds in the crowd, the eye box is essentially the, the space in space where your eye can be, where you have a full reticle, like a full vision. And you know when you're out of the eye box, because as you move back, it kind of, you get that tunnel vision and the scope starts to, or if you move to the side, you get the parallax and you just get half of it. This, this combination for me has an extremely forgiving eye box. Like as soon as I put it up, boom. Like, boom. Full, like right there. Just waiting for me. Um, which as a hunter might be the most important thing um, in a scope rifle combo, as I've been there before, where I'm like hunting for the eye box and you're kind of stressed and things aren't right. Some people have to move their, their face really close and then you end up getting scoped and it's, it's a bit of a nightmare. But overall, um, extremely forgiving eye box. Great, great feel to it. Um, the other thing that I should note here is that this is the first 
rifle that I have owned that has a floor plate as opposed to a typical magazine. So you're basically like top loading and then you have to keep your, your bullets kind of somewhere else on your person. Um, I'm assuming they're doing this to reduce the weight of the rifle. I'm not really sure. It seems to be pretty consistent with higher end rifles. I don't think it's a big deal, but I do think it's worth noting. The other thing that I find interesting is that a lot of people who do aftermarket load development, like I know guys who like to shoot 215 burgers out of their, um, their Browning X-Bolts, those won't fit in the magazine, but you can top load them. So maybe another reason that they do this is that they're, they're not locking you in to like the one, you know, bullet, size that would fit inside the clip and this way if you're going to be top loading anyways it really doesn't matter kind of what configuration you decide to load so other than that super happy paint job is super cool love that it came with a limb saver life pad feels great looks great heading out to shoot it next weekend after that i'll have some more specific feedback on how the gun actually shoots but I've seen the results. Um, when you buy a Fierce, they guarantee sub 0.5 MOA. So they send you the actual paper target that they shot it through. And then when Omer at Precision Optics set these up, he does the exact same thing. He cycles through a couple different loads, finds the bullet that works best for you. And then when you get your rifle back, it comes with the picture and the paper from the range of how everything of how everything worked and what the actual results were and that's how i know it sh shoots you know approximately 0.4 moa um at 100 yards now before closing out i did open this up for a q a on my instagram and people shot in some questions so i'll address those right now okay first up not so lovely says talk about why you chose that scope um essentially it was weight I wanted something, you know, sub 20 ounces. And the only other real competition for this scope, maybe the Z5 from Swarovski, but there's issues with how far out you can shoot that scope because of the limited adjustability. Basically, the kind of MOA of adjustability is really low. So you can only shoot so far or you have to mount it higher and then you're limited with your close range options. But to be quite honest, in a sub 20 ounce scope in the three to 15 power magnification range that has kind of this quality of glass, um, there really is no other competition. I was even willing to spend a lot more money and it seems like the most of scope development and those higher end scopes, like all the Night Force stuff and the Kale stuff, fantastic quality, but they're like monstrous scopes, you know, the, go up to 25 power and um, weigh 25 to 30 ounces. And I just, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of development in that mountain scope range. And the only other option would have been the VX3. It gets even lighter down to 16 ounces, but you're really losing a lot of that feature set when you get, when you, you know, for an extra three ounces, it, I've, I've heard the glass is manufactured in a different place. Um, and overall, uh, it was really worth the extra three ounces to get the feature set of the VX 5HD. Okay, so we have some kind of shooting questions here that I can't answer yet. What reticle? This is the Fire Dot Duplex. So I'll put an image of that on the screen right now, but it's essentially two lines with a red dot in the middle. Super simple, no holdover, you're always dialing in distance. That's the way I prefer. Interesting question here, monolithic bullets uh, versus other styles of bullets. This uh, guy used an ELDX on a Black Bear and it destroyed the bullet. I don't know if there is another bullet as controversial as the ELDX. And I'm not gonna pretend to try and solve that controversy here today. Here's what I know. I've shot five animals with the ELDX out of a 300 wind mag so far and every single animal has dropped in its tracks. And it was a 200 grain bullet. I think some of the smaller calibers, the 308s, the 6.5s, and the smaller bullets, the 135s, the 145s, have some penciling issues or they have some distribution issues. And people have had bad luck. But it seems to me that the bigger caliber, heavier grain ELDX 
even if they don't do exactly what they're supposed to do because you're a little too close, they are meant for further range, there's still so much force being delivered there that it really doesn't matter. So I was just going off of the success that I've personally had and also, to be honest, for factory loads for the 300 PRC, there's really only two choice, the 225 Target and the 212 ELDX. And this really liked the 212 ELDX, so that's what I'm going with. Who knows, might experiment with something else in the future. Was the motivation desire for a new rifle or a new cartridge? Kind of both. I actually love my 300 Win Mag, but I already knew I needed a new scope because I was carrying it around an extra 10 ounces for that Vortex scope for no reason. So funny story, I'd actually bought the Leopold scope three months before I even considered buying a new rifle and I just hadn't gotten around to putting it on my 300 Win Mag. And then I was scheduling a caribou hunt for my old man, my brother, and myself. They're not really hunters. My old man is, but he didn't want to bring his rifle here from Ontario. So I knew I needed a second rifle anyways. It didn't make sense to me to get another replica of the, you know, a 300 Win Mag, and I like bigger caliber rifles. So when I started looking around, I was like, I might as well get a more advanced caliber. And the 300 PRC is essentially a 300 Win Mag modernized. The bullet is a little longer, a little slimmer, uh, elevated ballistic coefficient. It's just a, it's a, it's a, a better designed bullet and it still has the 30 caliber stopping power. So that's why I decided to go with the 300 PRC. So it's a combination of wanting a new, a new caliber and a new rifle. So someone asked, do you think the 300 PRC is too much for whitetail or better to stick with 6.5? I think if you're hunting predominantly whitetail, there's no need for a 300 PRC. I think you're way overgunned and yeah, definitely stick with like a 6.5 or a 308. To be quite honest, even smaller than that, people seem to be having really good luck um, with, with th those particular animals. I, I, I see no need to shoot a 30 caliber bullet. How far are you shooting it to kill game when hunting with it? The farthest I've ever shot anything personally is 300 yards. I'm not a long distance guy. I don't plan to be a long distance guy. I wanted a gun that I would be comfortable shooting out to 700 yards with. That doesn't mean I'm going to, but I wanted a gun that was capable of it. And this rifle with this scope can do that in its sleep. It's all user error if there's a problem sub seven, 800 yards. Now for me personally, I'd still like to get into sub 400. I feel very confident shooting sub 400, 500. I've done it a lot at the range. I can hit a four inch gong at 400 all day, no problems. Um, and I really like the challenge. So. A kind of long-winded answer is I want a system capable of going to 700, 800, but I don't really ever want to be in a situation where I'm pulling the trigger at over 400 to 500. So Shane wants to know the weight, 7.9 pounds, all in, and how the tripod feels. Now he asked when it feels folded down. So the thing I like about the Spartan Precision Pro Javelin is that it removes completely, and it just sits in my backpack. And then there's a little adapter with a magnetic clip, when you're ready to go, you slot the post in the hole, spread the legs out, Bob's your uncle, go to town. Now, as I mentioned, I haven't shot this rifle, but because I had the Spartan Precision mounted on my other rifle, what I actually did is I didn't buy a second tripod. The things are like 300 bucks. I just got the Picatinny rail attachment for this rifle, and now I can use the bipod on both rifles. So I can comment, I really enjoy the Spartan Precision. It cants from side to side a little bit, the legs are quite adjustable. I have the long version, um, and, it, and it it'll kind of gives you as much mobility as you want it to without being sloppy. It still feels pretty solid. I've used it off the tailgate of my truck quite a lot when sighting things in, and with a sandbag under the butt and the tripod under the front, I find I feel incredibly stable and shoot no problem. So um, I really like that system, and again, as a mountain hunter, I always start with weight and then backwards engineer my choices. So I don't get overwhelmed by what's in the market. I start with what am I willing to accept for a weight penalty and then I look in that class for my available options. And again, much like this Loophole VX5 HD, there's really not that many other bipods for the mountain hunter that are that light and have that rich a feature set. All right, there we go. Quick little first impressions video on my new Fierce CT Rival with the Leupold VX5HD. 
Hope you liked it. As I promised, I'll get out and shoot this right away and then give you guys an update with how I'm feeling and what my impressions are after cycling some rounds through it. If I've missed anything or made any mistakes or you got any additional comments, drop them in the comments section below or shoot me a DM on Instagram, mindful underscore hunter or an email, j at mindfulhunter.com. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Thank <laughs> you.